Hey, welcome to the 40 Finance channel, everybody. My name's Jeff Beers. Today we're gonna dig into another stock that I own, and that is Rocket. Rocket stock has come down uh, quite a bit here recently, despite having very positive earnings reports. And I get a lot of questions on Rocket, and the answer about its decline is really quite simple, and that is just that analysts expect uh, interest rates to go up, housing market to cool. So that's the consensus bet in housing. The anticipation is that Rocket's revenues will slowly decrease over the next couple years. So we'll dig into Rocket stock. Uh, I'll tell you everything that I know, where this company's going, uh, where the price sits today from a value standpoint, uh, and my price targets for the future. Reminder that my stock picks and projections are just my opinion for your entertainment. However, if you do enjoy stock market content like this, going deep on stocks like Rocket, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everyone for your support. Okay, so I mentioned that Rocket released their earnings recently on May 5th. You can see uh, the headline, which in my opinion is a bit misconstrued. EPS misses by one cent, misses on revenue. But if you scroll down to the bullet points, it was non-GAAP EPS of 89 cents, misses by a penny. GAAP EPS of $1.07 beats by 13 cents. So it just really depends on uh, what side you want to look on. For most uh, traditional purposes, it is the GAAP EPS that applies most prominently to most PE ratios. On the revenue side, $4 billion in a single quarter. That's up 91% year over year. It did miss by 240 million on consensus estimates, but for all intents and purposes, you know, in my opinion, 4 billion uh, was a pretty darn good quarter. All right, taking a look at the stock today, this is a year to date chart. They kicked off the year about $20. Today you're at 1762. And there's not a lot of metrics filled here in Yahoo. I'm not really sure why that's the case because we actually have a uh, full year's worth of data from 2020. But I can tell you that the PE ratio based on the fact that last year they had about $4.10 in earnings, uh, you're looking at a, a P ratio no higher, <laughs> no higher than five. That's exactly where you're at right now, five. Uh, the earnings per share for last fiscal year should be $4 and about 10 cents. Okay, let's dig into the problem for Rocket Stock right now. How does a company with a, with a trailing PE of five have so much trouble getting their stock price to go above, you know, recent averages. And here's where the trouble is. It is the anticipation of declining earnings per share and declining revenue. So if we look at the consensus estimates, last year, I, th I think I said $4.10, it was $4.11. That was the year ago EPS for 2020. This year, analysts have it at 229. So, you know, essentially cut in half, right? And then look at next year, $1.67. So Rocket's EPS is, a, is basically projected to go down, uh, almost halving each year heading through 2022. And on the revenue side, a uh, year ago, 17 billion. This year, 12 billion. Next year, 10 billion. That's what analysts are thinking. Minus 26% this year. Minus another 18% next year. So this is why you're seeing the stock uh, sort of bleed out, if you will. Analysts aren't saying that Rocket is a bad company that's going to be losing money or doing something fundamentally wrong with their business operations. They're saying that the housing market was at a peak basically last year, uh, not to mention the refinance market, which Rocket is heavily dependent on. The projection is the refinance market with interest rates going up 
will sort of dry up and that's going to ruin their revenue streams. So while Rocket has a PE, a trailing PE today of, you know, less than five, as I mentioned, when you see those EPS numbers basically go down year over year, your PE is getting higher in the future. So your forward PE is looking higher than your trailing PE, and that just means your value per share is actually you know, lessening over time. So that's where the stigma is right now. So what do I think as a rocket stockholder? Uh, well, for starters, just to get to the point, I'm not selling this stock. Uh, this is a company I use for my own personal mortgage. And I've said on this channel many, many times that I think the housing bubble or deflation or whatever you want to say happens to the housing market, I think the media is selling that harder than reality is selling it. I don't know how things are in your neck of the woods, but here in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, housing prices continue to go up. Demand is very, very strong. We're seeing um, you know, turnover in housing at a very quick rate. We also continue to have limited supply. And we're sort of in this unique world right now uh, with high lumber prices and all these things that uh, existing homes have suddenly become uh, maybe more attractive than new builds. The other side of the coin in regards to refinance is while the media is pumping, uh, interest rates are going to go through the roof and, and inflation and all these things, uh, you know, the 10-year, I think today was at 1.5. 1, something like that. So it really hasn't went up a lot. Uh, it had a couple spikes in February and March, but it continues to kind of tread water where it is. So depending on who you are in your existing mortgage, uh, you could still see opportunity to refinance or even shorten the length of your loan. Uh, there's a lot of ways to get a cheaper interest rate on your mortgage, there's sort of the baseline 30 year rate. But if you started to look towards like a 15 year or a 10 year, if you have the opportunity to do that, you could save even more on your interest rate, despite the fact that interest rates are slightly higher than they were last year. So bottom line for me as a rocket shareholder, uh, I do think declining revenue and EPS is uh, potentially a thing. I don't know if they will be able to match next year, but I think that there's a lot of projections that are overblown to the negative. All right, I wanna call out a couple quick comments on the earnings call from Jay Farner, the CEO of Rocket. And I think that if you ever read a Rocket earnings report, this is a company that is uh, very fundamental in the way they go about their success. They are not looking for shiny objects. They have a plan and their job is to execute it. And I personally think they do a great job at it. So uh, Jay's going on in here talking about our biggest opportunity in the market today, which is transforming the home buying experience. It is clear that home purchase transactions represent the single largest growth opportunity for Rocket. We are in the hottest real estate market in more than a decade and demand is accelerating. March and April have been the strongest months of purchase. Simple fact is the home buying process is extremely complicated. It involves multiple professionals, including real estate agents, blah, blah, blah. All of this complexity has led to home buying being one of the last transactions to move online. It has also created an extremely fragmented market where no company has been able to grab significant national market share. We were the second largest retail purchase lender in 2020, excluding the secondary market, and that was with only low single-digit penetration in the purchase market. Today, I am proud to announce that Rocket Mortgage has set the goal to become the number one retail home purchase lender in America over the next 24 months. All right, so a couple quick things about uh, that paragraph that I just read. Uh, number one, Rocket has identified their biggest growth opportunity in being the retail purchase of homes, not refinancing, okay? 
They already dominate refinancing. Certainly you've seen their commercials somewhere around. They dominate in refinancing. They also have a fantastic uh, customer service score uh, of servicing loans, right? So, so that part of the ship is fine. And I think it's safe to assume that, hey, like refinancing, probably the peak was last year. I still think that there's fruit on the tree, uh, but let's just say it does have a declining opportunity. What you read there in that paragraph was that there's still this gigantic opportunity in retail home purchasing, and that that's the one that Rocket is focusing their new efforts on. So if Rocket was the second largest national player at a single digit percentage, and Jay Farner and team are going to attack uh, that market with the goal of being number one over the next 24 months, um, that's the type of thing when it comes out of the mouth of Rocket, uh, I think that you have to take them seriously. I believe they have the capital to compete in a market like that. And quite honestly, seeing what they've done over the past 15 years, they have a great track record of accomplishing the goals that they set out for. So this is why, amongst many other reasons, why I am still fundamentally bullish on Rocket, despite the fact that the price is coming down. All right, taking a look at tip ranks to see what the best performing analysts think about Rocket stock. Uh, it's kind of funny because there was a time when I was in this platform a year ago where there was no analyst coverage of Rocket. Now we have a unbelievable amount of folks who are coming in. And as always, after an earnings call, which we had four days ago, we get a lot of updates and you can see it's mostly holds, which I think makes sense. You did get two sells uh, and one buy. Most of the price targets, I'm just gonna say it lands around $20 on average. You do have a high in here of 26, a couple 26s, but let's just call it $20. Remember today we're in that $17.50 to $18 range. All right, so let's get in my price targets. Today is May 10th for Rocket Stock. Current price, 1738 when I was typing this document. Forward PE today of 783. Don't forget, I did say it had a trailing 12 months uh, PE of under $5. That is correct. But the analyst EPS projection consensus wise is 222 for this year. Last year, they came in at 410. Fiscal year runs Jan 1 through December 31st, so very easy to look ahead into next year. All right, my projections here for January of 2022. I'm going to say the forward PE range remains about the same. I can't imagine it goes any lower than the seven uh, that we're at, but we'll see. And I think it could go up as high as 15, but I'm going to be... Uh, keeping it right here at 10 for now because we are in the midst of a market meltdown. My EPS, I do project that they will do better uh, than consensus analysts by about 20%. So I'm going to say $2.65. That's a price range of $18.55 to $26.50 for January of 2022 when they released their fiscal report. All right, so bottom line, there's not a ton of room to run uh, with Rocket in today's uh, stock price, but that some of that is because we're seeing sort of the market meltdown, um, and I think prices are going to be a little unstable for the next couple months. But with that being said, from a long-term perspective, I really like what Rocket's doing. Keep in mind, this is a stock with a single-digit PE ratio that's making $4 billion in revenue a quarter right now. Uh, so to, to say that it's undervalued, I think is pretty fair. I think also, at least from my desk, I see Rocket as a company that has the potential to outperform across the next three years, whether that's through acquisition, technology, focusing on the retail home buying market. I just like where it sits. I like where the company is moving in a time where most analysts think that the home, that the housing market is just filled with hot air and it's going to blow up at some point. 
Keep in mind that if interest rates do go up like many people think, it's not that the housing market dries up, the price of homes actually come down uh, because the affordability score will be thrown into the interest rate you're paying on your loan. So it doesn't mean that demand for homes goes down when interest rates go up. What it usually means is house prices will decline in tandem with the interest rate so that long story short, at the end of the day, when you sign the loan, you're still sort of paying the same ultimate price for the house. And just instead of being on the sale price, it's now built into the cost of your mortgage. All right, so bottom line, guys, I think that some of these housing market things are overblown. I think Rocket is a very, very cheap stock. And for myself, I'm in with Rocket long term. I said that from the beginning. Um, mortgage stocks are not triple up opportunities. Uh, they never have been, they never will be. Uh, but if you can keep plugging along and hold a stock that's less than $20 uh, for three plus five years, whatever you call it, I think Rocket is a good company to be with. All right, guys, let me know what you think of Rocket stock in the comments. As always, thank you for your support. Please give me a like if you enjoyed this video. We'll see you on the next one.